This is a quick video over manometers. All a manometer is, is a tube bent in, in a U shape that has a fluid in it, usually a very heavy fluid, usually mercury is in it. But in our case, we're going to use water. And you use the height difference of that fluid to calculate the pressure difference. And at far case, we're going to have the, the outside of the tube connected or just open to the atmosphere. So the pressure outside of the tube is 14.7 PSI or one ATP or one atmosphere. And one atmosphere is equal to a thousand kilopascals. And a thousand kilopascals, or sorry, that's a that's a hundred kilopascals. A hundred kilopascals is equal to a hundred thousand newtons per meter squared. So that's what we have. So how can we use this height to actually give us a pressure reading? Well, what's the pressure due to just the height of this fluid? What's the pressure due to just the height of that? Well, it is due to the pressure of the water, just due to the water, is equal to the density of the water times the height of the water times the gravitational constant. And that will give us the pressure of the water. So if the density of water is equal to a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, and the height, let's say the height, the height is equal to one meter and g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared well if we just multiply that out so pw or the pressure of just the water is equal to 1000 kilograms per meter squared times the height of the water are one meter times 9.81 meters per second squared and that gives us 9810 kilograms see this meter cancel out. oh that's cubed that's cubed so that meter and that meter cancel out that so that's just per meter second squared and I messed up that's meters cubed and then you have two meters on the top so that gives us kilograms per meter squared. But that's not a pr that doesn't seem like a pressure, but it actually is. Because a newton a newton is equal to let's just make sure I do this correctly, is equal to a kilogram meter second squared. So one one newton is equal to one kilogram meter second squared. So if we were to plug that in, nine thousand eight hundred and ten kilograms per meter second squared times times a newton second squared a kilogram meter. So what does that give us? Well this kilogram and this kilogram cancel, this second squared and this second cancel. So we end up with 9810 newtons per meter squared and that is a newton is a force that's a force and meter squared is an area so we have force per area and that is a pressure so we have so this is a pressure so what is the pressure right here well that is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere or P1 plus PW and for our case we had a hundred thousand newtons so a hundred thousand newtons newtons per meter squared plus nine thousand eight hundred and ten newtons per meter squared so we get We get a hundred and nine thousand eight hundred and ten newtons per meter squared. So then P2, assuming that this is one constant fluid, it is uniform, then P2 must equal this pressure. So P2 must equal that pressure if there's not another fluid here. There's air, but we're assuming that the air, the density of air is so small that it's irrelevant. So then the pressure that P2 is, 
is just is just let's see it's a hundred and nine so that's equal to a hundred and nine point eight newton or kilonewtons or kilopascals so it's 109 kilopascals so let's just go to Wolfram Alpha to put that into into PSI so we have a hundred and nine point eight kilopascals to I probably should just do the math but I'm kinda lazy to PSI so that's 15 15.92 PSI So then P2, P2 is equal to 15.975, whoops, 925 PSI. So we found out the pressure of tube without even knowing the area of this tube, or the cross-sectional area of this tube. We didn't even have to worry about that. All we needed to know was the height. So what did we really learn? We learned that the that the that P2 or the pressure on one side of the manometer P2 oops P2 is equal to P1 plus the density of the fluid times the height of the fluid times the crop the uh, gravitational constant. So what happens if we maybe had a had a, another fluid like right here. We had some other fluid that was right here. Well then that would have its own height. That would have its own height. So this would be height 2. So then P2 plus the density of our new fluid times the height of the new fluid, so H2 times, did I say P2 up there? H2, yeah. H2 times the gravitational constant is equal to it's equal to P1, or the pressure of just the atmosphere, or whatever is on there, plus the density of the psychic fluid, so for our case it was water, and I mean that's some unknown density, we don't know, Time or times the height of the water, I don't know why I'm putting H, I should probably put W, times the height of the water, times the uh, gravitational constant. So that's how you can actually find out the uh, pressure difference. So really if you wanted just to find P2, P2 would be equal to P1 plus the density uh, the density of water, which I'm going to change back to, so this should actually be water. Water times the height of the water times the gravitational constant plus the density of whatever purple is, so I'm going to say perp, times the height of the perp, purple fluid, times the gravitational the uh, gravitational co the gravitational constant so that's how you can find the psychic pressure if you have another fluid and, I mean you can just keep doing that maybe you have even another fluid just right here and you just do the whole thing where the pressure of that is just now the density of this whatever that is times the height of it times gravity so you just add that in and that is monometers in the very basic concept um, it's just I mean these are the really important things it's just uh, the pressure P2 plus the density of whatever fluids on that side is equal to the pressure on the other side times the density of the water times the height of the water times the cross the gravitational constant so have a good day